yo, what is up guys, Aegis Rick here, and for those who actually want to stick around for the in-depth skill analysis, you're in for a trip, let me tell you. I've got a boatload of information and suggestions regarding all of the skills this time around. But as a very clear warning, I please ask that you follow this guide merely as a reference. You should never take anybody's word at face value, and ultimately, it should be you that makes the decisions about what skills to get revolving around your own playstyle. If you like this video, or any of them in the Ultimate Guardian Guide series, please like, favorite, comment, and spread the word about it as it would help me a lot. Anyways, I've made some very distinct changes as to the format of this guide, so let's take a look at those first. Alright guys, this time it's serious, and I've added a few new features this time around, so listen up. The skill name and skill icons are still there as expected, and the ranking system I have used in my previous guides is also still the same. This time, however, the letter designations will be shown over the skill icons, and that is to make room for all of this other information I've got over here. This big letter will be used to give my personal rank of the importance of the skill. The grading scale ranges from S to F, S being an absolute godly skill, all the way down to F being a downright shameful one. In this box here, I'll be indicating all of the skill's various traits which gets pretty in-depth. Along the top row will tell you what frames of animation the skill has. It can either have invincibility, super armor, or semi-super armor frames. The middle row describes the trajectory when the skill connects on an enemy. It could either be a launcher, a stun hit, or a knockdown. The bottom row are various other properties that the skill has, which I have shown here. If any of what I've just mentioned doesn't make sense to you, please be sure to check the PvP term section of the UG guide. And that, guys, is all you need to know for this guide. So if you're up for it, let's go! Bash is an amazing utility skill, as it provides a guardian with one of the only means of juggling opponents who have touched down onto the ground, thus keeping your combos going without much room for evasion. Bash 1 is the only one of the three with this property, while the other two are simply necessary to chain your skills into your other skills to extend your combos. Press Kick defines utility, as it not only causes a stun on hit, but it can also be used to cover short distances and most importantly has invincibility frames on it to avoid incoming attacks. Leveling this skill ups the chance to break guard, but I personally don't suggest it because Guardian has many other ways to get past defensive players. Thrust Kick is one of the Guardian's highest sources of damage in combo. As an interesting side note, this skill is also one of the few which can be used as a gap closer and be cancelled into a wide array of different skills. It synergizes extremely well with the following skill, Punishing Uppercut, and can be nearly always used in 1-2 fashion. Punishing Uppercut is hands down my favorite skill in the entire game, a devastating shield combo that has the ability to launch the opponent not once but twice in case the first time doesn't connect. It has a significant duration of super armor frames making the skill relatively safe to use and can connect on opponents standing there, in the sky, or even on the ground. The round swings are very abusive moves that utilize a stun to initiate various combos. Round swing 1 and 2 are the only ones that have stun, and that stun is very short. However, some skills can still capitalize on its short duration. Round swing 3 is a new pick for me, which synergizes well with the first two for when you would like to launch opponents immediately. I'm still on the fence of the usefulness of Titan's Guardian. Undoubtedly, it does some of the highest Guardian damage, but it can easily be avoided by most wary opponents. However, I was personally convinced that against super armor buff abusers, this skill can easily destroy anyone foolish enough to use it against you. If you can convince yourself out of this skill though, you'd save yourself a boatload of points. Because my original build was slightly revised, and I picked up some new additions, I sadly had to make a sacrifice somewhere. Rushing Wind doesn't entirely synergize with all of the Guardian's other combo skills, and is usually used only as a combo finisher in conjunction with Crash and Steel. Because of this, I simply kept the skill as utility this time around, though my previous points still stand if you already have it maxed. There are other possible locations to shave off some SP if you still want to max it. Iron Skin makes the Guardian an immovable tank, and grants you the Super Armor buff for about 10 seconds. He is one of the few classes that have a variation of this buff, so it's highly suggested you capitalize on it. Sadly, however, opponents know it is foolish to fight you while this buff is active, and so any other benefits that come from leveling this skill become moot, as all the while they are simply running away from you until it runs out. Although it is overshadowed by other slow debuff skills on other classes, Threatening Shout is still your only and undeniably decent debuff to your opponents. In PvP, it is also one of your only skills with the Vortex or Vacuum Effect and Guard Break to boot. These traits make it work amazingly well as an initiation, and if it connects, can greatly hinder your opponent until the debuff wears off. Shield Smash is a theoretically useful move that is essentially the only ranged 
skill in the Guardian skill set, and that range is pretty limited. It can break guard and knock down enemies who are playing overly defensive, however it suffers greatly by having a dangerously large aftercast delay, meaning you are easy to punish if you miss. Expert Guard is a signature Guardian skill that provides unshakable frontal defense, however it's a bit misleading in that the only real difference from this guard and the normal one is that it doesn't suffer from blowback or shield durability. It can still be hit with most guard breaking skills and such. More importantly however, I like this skill being used offensively for its large range, knockdown, and guard break. I cannot believe I didn't get this skill before, and this current level cap only makes it even more viable. Ironheart massively increases your defense against all forms of direct damage at the cost of some of your own. While it won't usually be possible to use this buff every round, it is so effective that it might actually grant you a victory where you otherwise wouldn't have gotten it. Titan Strength works well at countering the negative effects of the Ironheart buff. However, its potential as a buff does not necessarily turn the tide of battle as seriously as Ironheart. Nonetheless, extra damage is something I think can be afforded in the current build, even if I don't see it as game changing. The move speed down is hardly an issue at all. Grab Spike serves as one of your best grabs because it could connect in almost any situation, whether it be standing, on the ground, or in the air. Its damage is especially intimidating if used early in a combo, and it can also re-catch opponents back into the grab if they decide to evasive dash out of it during its animation. Be careful though, this skill sadly increases your combo hit counter at an alarming rate, making the rest of your combo do much less damage. Double combination is a decently good skill for how safe it is if you connect. It has absolute iframe after the first hit. However, the first hit is what's most important as it causes a significantly long stun. This skill is pivotal for utility as it serves as one of your few stun skills. However, other than that, it is pretty negligible. Leveling this skill would be pretty wasteful since you usually will not be hitting all hits of it. Earthquake is one of my favorite skills for punishing opponents as it is one of the highest DPS on the Guardian skill tree. It is a bit difficult to actually connect and often, if it doesn't, pretty easy to punish as well. To counter that, it has a beautiful iframe and super armor for those select situations where it's safe to use. Although it has a lot of damage, it's hard to recommend if you do not see yourself using or connecting with this skill very often. It costs you 5 points, so I figure I gotta mention it, but it is downright necessary for you to get evasive dash, as it is your best and sometimes only evasive to get out of combos. Check the PvP term section of the guide if you are confused about this, or quite frankly any terms I have used in this video. For instance, like I've already mentioned, those ones down here. Dash attack is a cheap skill SP wise that can add a very quick slash to your roll that causes knockdown. It has pretty good utility if you want to quickly knock your opponent back down, though it's often not that safe to use if they are expecting it. I would say if it doesn't correspond with your playstyle, or you don't think you can hit with it effectively, I would not bother with this skill at all. Ankle kick is more of a joke attack as it hits grounded opponents but does practically no damage. It's laughable that they actually allow you to level the skill up for more damage, though trust me, there are better things to do if someone's on the ground like that. As an important note, you might not want to accidentally cast this skill, as its command is F and you use the F key for other skills, so you can lock this skill up in the skill menu. I have actually seen some people use shield bash to combo with, however I think the damage is weak and animation is pretty slow. It is more used as utility for keeping combos alive, though as I've said at the start, you do what you think is best for your playstyle. Because of its iframe and small step backwards, backstep thrust has a lot more utility than it's given credit for. The position can also be held for a short time afterwards, so in essence it can be used as a bait for catching people right in front of you. Though because it only hits with the normal stab attack, the following skill, backstep upper, is usually much more preferred. On top of the added benefit of causing launch on the second hit, backstep upper also does a great deal of unexpected damage. It also has the same iframe taken from backstep thrust with some additional frames added onto it. It is also extremely safe to use as you can cancel very easily to other skills after the animation. Do note however that the launch is on the second hit and the first hit of this skill can be evaded using the standing evasion. Ever since they have adjusted the get up attack on characters, it has been near impossible to actively combo off of grab strike anymore and it has thus been lowered in popularity amongst some fighters in PvP. I still personally think this skill has excellent unescapable damage and works effectively as a combo finisher. However, this is one of those skills that possibly, if your playstyle does not demand for it, would potentially save you a lot of points to be used on other skills if you decide not to get this skill. Power Driver has some iframe when it is cast, 
so it can be used to effectively bypass some easily telegraphed attacks. Mostly, however, it is used to literally catch your opponents who are close enough. Be careful, however, because it is possible to punish the user who connects with this skill with the new addition of the very fast getup attack, which I agree is stupid and something I hope gets changed for this skill in the near future. Webzen, I'm looking at you. I love Crashing Steel, not only for its amazing damage scaling on level up, but also its utility. You go soaring into the air and cover a great amount of distance, making it just another method of catching people just within range, especially those being overly defensive. Be careful, however, because if this skill is easily telegraphed, expect to take some serious damage, because it is pretty simple to punish. Defensive dash is not emphasized enough, and it is up there as one of my favorite Guardian skills. Its cooldown is incredibly short, making it one of the best mobility skills the Guardian has. It does not suffer from debuffs, so it is ideal to use when you are afflicted with various move speed related ones. If you're ever wondering how to get up to somebody, abusing this skill is usually key. Shield Reflection is an amazing skill that has recently been changed to be even more amazing now, granting an 80% chance to Dizzy at the max level. It has excellent synergy with Defensive Dash, allowing you to dive into attacks and then hit them with the Shield Reflection after the block. Hopefully, if you did not get that pitiful skill Defensive Expertise, you can hit with this skill after almost any block. Your charge skills signify the only true type of movement for catching opponents, and in the Guardian's case, that also involves having frontal defense during the animations. Now, it's hard for me to give a proper level for charge attack, as different playstyles may utilize this skill more or less often. It is without a doubt your best mobility skill to catch up with opponents, and leveling it increases its range. So if you really want to catch with your opponents from downtown, by all means level it up. However, as an important note, this skill sometimes can be unsafe and may force you to accidentally use your evasive dash if you are interrupted during its animation. Again, it's kind of hard for me to suggest Breakneck Charge, as it costs a hefty 7 skill points a level and only hits one time. However, the distance that your character charges forward also goes up, so you can land the stun from further out. It is just too hard for me to suggest what to do either way, and it really corresponds with your playstyle. <laughs> Alright, we're in the home stretch, guys. I've listed the passives by my personal ranking. In the S tier, the max HP increase passive should be maxed on almost any character that wants to enter the PvP arena. This same thing can also be said for both your defensive and offensive masteries, which provide amazing overall benefits to your character stats. The A tier passives are purely situational and are dependent entirely on whether or not your gear warrants them. You really shouldn't find yourself running out of mana, and you also want to shoot for a maximum of around 70% crit if at all possible. If these are starting to become an issue for you in PvP, and getting better gear cannot remedy it, you cannot go wrong with getting these passives as necessary. Now these F tier passives are downright useless for PvP. Defensive stance is merely a prerequisite for defensive dash. Shield recovery will not see use, as none of your opponents will hit your shield long enough to actually have it start recovering, and Titan's fervor doesn't even work in PvP at all. Well guys, that's about all I've got to say about the Guardian. I realize I did not touch on all the skills, more specifically the skills I did not bother to pick up. I've made a completely separate video to explain my reasoning behind those choices. Click on the annotation to go there if you're interested. I hope this guide has helped you, and as I've already mentioned, please like, favorite, comment, and above all, spread the word about this video. It would mean the world to me. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys later. later.